Hi there friends, it's Rachel Gregg and today I'm sharing another art journaling process video. This one's created in a Square Dilutions journal. So I thought I'd just give you a little run through on how I've created it like with the full tutorial and also just do a little chit chat while um, I show you the process. So what I'm starting off here with is just some acemic writing. So it's not uh, journaling that is to be read, it's just basically getting thoughts and ideas in my head out to onto the paper. So on the right hand side there you can see uh, that there's a page that's already been done and I didn't film the process of that, that was just something uh, that I had created just on a whim at some time and it was just a background there that was created using some Dilutions ink sprays and the background was already done uh, probably, I don't know, well in advance of me actually drawing that quote on top and obviously that quote at some point I was using some it's like a uh, India ink but I can't remember exactly what ink it was but you can see that it's really glossy there just a little bit of a highlight there in the uh, in the light and uh, and I just wrote doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will and you'll see the full uh, journal thing there at the end when I you know show you the whole journal spread and basically what I was doing here writing on the left hand side is just some thoughts about doubts and dreams that I've got sometimes I mean all of us really as artistic people will often doubt our work or doubt what we're doing or I don't know even in life doubt things about ourselves and kind of be really critical of ourselves so rather than let those thoughts fester away in my brain I thought they're better off being out on the page so I'm using a Fude ball pen and uh, just journaling various thoughts that are coming out so this here is really not meant to be read in terms of it being a part of the journal page so I mean I can kind of make out some words here and there but it really doesn't matter it's not about the actual process of reading it and what I was saying it was just a more of a long-winded version of what that quote is on the right hand side so anyway that's good to get that out of my head and onto the page and I'm just basically using those words and that scribbling down just as a layer in the page if you didn't want to write that out you could actually you know use stamps to stamp something like that out instead of writing it out yourself but I think writing things out just adds your own handwriting as well and like it, it adds you to the art journal pages so and the good thing is about doing it when you know it's not meant to be read it really doesn't matter how messy it is so I, I really really advocate for grabbing a pen and journaling out just anything even if you go I don't know what to write well I don't know write about when you woke up and what you had for breakfast or whatever it really doesn't matter if you're not going to read it it doesn't matter you could be going off at someone who's really annoying you in life and no one's ever going to read it so you're safe so there's lots of different ways why that type of writing is really good for journaling so what I'm doing now is I'm actually spraying on some Dilutions ink spray onto that left hand side so it then becomes cohesive with that right hand side of that page so I used a bit of cut grass Dilutions ink spray and just spritzed it at the top and then you, with a water bottle just spritzed on some water and let it drip down and I didn't want it to cover the whole page because then I thought it was just going to be way too green so I did allow some spaces to um, still stay open and what I'm doing now is I'm putting on some gel medium so I've actually torn this image out of a magazine it's um, a fashion magazine and if you look through your magazines you might find some really quirky images that you can use often the fashion magazines will have some really theatrical poses and some really interesting garments as well so you can often find some really great images the magazine quality does differ depending on the magazine this one here I'm using is quite a glossy and thin magazine so you'll see that it'll start wrinkling a little bit because of that gel medium uh, but you can also find some other magazines that have a bit more matte paper or thicker paper it just depends on the magazine and I'm just pressing over that entire image using a brayer just so it's firmly stuck down so I've just stuck it down just with some gel medium now gel medium uh, the one that I used was the Dina Wakely gel medium and it adheres you know thin magazine pages like this really easily uh, that's what it's designed for you can see the magazine page now is starting to crinkle up and you know if that bothers you then um, you know you could probably use a double-sided tape instead of a wet glue 
uh, and that way it won't be that wet to crinkle up like that but for me I just think it just adds a little bit more texture to the page and now I'm going to add even more texture and this is just some white linen dilutions paint um, and now I'm just using a craft squeegee to go or just add a few little bits and pieces of that paint over that page and the good thing about having that kind of like that crinkle look in that magazine is when I'm going over with that squeegee with the paint on those crinkle parts it's actually showing up those crinkles so it's really accentuating some of those um, crinkled parts and that texture part so it's just adding more you know texture and bits to the page which is kind of cool now what I'm doing is using this is a dilution stencil and there's on this particular one there's like a little leafy ferny frond uh, going down the side here and I'm just grabbing some texture paste and I'll be putting that through just using a palette knife now the texture paste I'm using you could see there that I'm kind of getting towards the end of that jar you know if you're going to leave all of that air in that bottle and not use a texture paste it can dry out so you can see here how it's just a little bit dry um, than what it would be if it was just a fresh batch so I always encourage you to when you purchase a product to try and use it up as kind of a fast as fast as you can I guess <laughs> just so you don't open up that jar and then it's all um, dried up because there's a lot of air inside that that pot so I'm just putting that through that stencil and then putting it through again now this is where I've realized again that I probably should have started from that um, right hand side and then worked it over to the left hand side so then I'm not pressing down on that left hand part there see how the stencils covering that left hand bit of where I put the texture paste but again it doesn't really matter I'm not pressing down on that side so it shouldn't squish that stenciling anyway so now I'm just going through the uh, the stencil with this texture paste and the good thing is with the palette knife you can just um, like squeeze off any excess just with the palette knife so and it goes really through really quite nicely now with the texture paste you can actually color that up if you want and but because it's going over some of that inked background what I find with this texture paste is it will suck up some of that green ink so these little fern fronds will kind of not stay white they'll have a little bit of a color once they dry and I'm not trying to be too neat or precise with this I'm just basically just adding more texture to the page okay so once I've done all that texture paste just got to allow that to dry and it doesn't take that long to dry usually you know 10 15 minutes it just depends on you know what the humidity is like where you are um, and now I'm just want to kind of edge around those little leaves because they've you know blended off into the background in some areas now um, just before I go on to what I'm doing there with those scribble sticks I'll just mention before how the, the texture paste will actually soak up some of those ink parts or the ink spray so you can see on the right hand side see where I did that texture paste and it's now kind of got that green ink but then all the other texture paste that went over the top of the magazine is still white so it's kind of you know stayed a bit white there so what I'm doing now is I've got some scribble sticks these are the Dina Wakely scribble sticks this is set number three so it's got the metallics in there and I'm just dipping the scribble stick into some water and then um, pressing it down onto the page around those texture paste leaves and then just rubbing it with my fingers just to blend it out and so what it's doing is it's just making all those texture paste leaves just a nice little goldeny color there so that's just a nice little way just to highlight any kind of texture and I'm not trying to cover all of the leaves I'm just trying to give some definition just around those leaves and just on those edges just so it highlights it a little bit off the page and I want to continue on with that metallic kind of look so I've got some distress sprays and this is one of the metallic colors okay so what I'm doing instead of spritzing directly onto the page because I don't want it to go too much over the focal image so I'm getting a splatter brush and then using that to flick over that uh, metallic spray onto little, you know just little pieces here and there on the left and right hand sides of the page I'm also adding some over the quote so then it just makes it a little bit more cohesive and this product here this is a water-based product so it does just wash out with water 
but it will stick onto that splatter brush if you leave it on there. So it's a good idea just to wash it after you've finished using it. So while that's drying, I'm just going to choose a couple of little quotes here. This is from the Tim Holtz um, little word packs and just choosing some here that will go with my page. And the ones that I've chosen say, do your best, never give up and great things take time. And even though they're adhesive, I really want them to stick on. I don't want them to fall off at any stage. So I'm just go I'm going over the little backs there with a little bit of gel medium. And then that'll just make sure that they will stick for good. So all I need to do now is just wait for everything to dry. And this page is done and dusted. So I hope this has given you some ideas on how to use different layers on your pages and especially to use that uh, the writing in that background. You can see now how that writing has been mostly covered and layered over the top, but it still actually adds a really nice design feature to the page. And it's a good way to get things out of your head as well and just onto your page. And it also just makes it your art journal. So thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see more of my art journal videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out more of my work at rachelgregg.com.